Cecil C. Steiner developed a form of cephalometric analysis presented in 1953. Steiner analysis consists of three parts, skeletal, dental, and soft tissue. There are five references of skeletal, six of dental, and one soft tissue. Skeletal analysis It has five measurements S and A angle, S and B angle, A and B angle, mandibular plane angle, and occlusal plane angle. Steiner used Sela Tunisian line or SN line as a reference plane for his skeletal analysis. SNA angle SNA angle is an angle which is formed by S point, N point, and A point. S point is center of Sela Tursica. N point is the most anterior point frontal nasal suture in mid sagittal plane. A point subspinal is the deepest point on the contour of the premaxilla. So we connect all these three points and the SNA angle is the joint of intersecting between SN line and NA line. To locate point A, we can fix the ruler on point N and moving it forward until it touches the contour of the premaxilla and we mark a point there. SNA angle is representative of maxilla position, whether it is positioned anteriorly or posteriorly to the cranial base. SNA angle average is 82 degrees. If the SNA angle is greater than 82 degrees, the maxilla is protrusive. The maxilla is more forward than normal. If the SNA angle is less than 82 degrees, the maxilla is retrusive. The maxilla is more backward than normal. S and B angle. In this angle, we have the point B instead of point A, which is the deepest point on the contour of the mandible. So this angle is formed by connecting point S, point N, and point B. And the S and B is an angle of intersecting between those lines. This angle is to assess whether the mandible is protrusive or retrusive relative to the cranial base. The S and B angle mean is 80 degrees. So if S and B angle greater than 80 degrees, such as a mandibular protrusion, in this situation the mandible more forward than normal. And if S and B angle less than 80 degrees indicates a mandible retrusion, its mean mandible is more backward than normal. The third angle is A and B. A and B is formed by joining the point A, point N, and point B. We can also get this angle by S and A minus S and B. The A and B angle provide the anterior posterior discrepancy of the maxilla to the mandibular apical base. The normal average of A and B is 2 degrees. It is derived from SNA 82 degrees minus SNB 80 degrees. A and B angles greater than 2 degrees indicates class 2 skeletal relationship. And A and B angles less than 2 degrees indicates a class 2 skeletal relationship. Mandibular plane angle. This angle is made from mandibular plane and SN line. Steiner mandibular plane is a line made from gonion to gnation. Gonion is located by two tangents, one on the inferior border of the mandible and the other to the posterior border of the ramus. The bisection of these two lines perpendicularly projected on the mandibular corner is point gonion. Before we locate point gnation, we need to locate pogonion and menton. Menton is the lowest point of the symphysis of the mandible. Pogonion is the most anterior point on the symphysis of the mandible. Gnation is a point located by taking the midpoint between pogonion and menton. 
Steiner mandibular plane is a line made from gonion to gnation. The mandibular plane angle is formed by relating the mandibular plane to the SN line. The mean for this angle is 32 degrees. Bigger mandibular plane angle suggests vertical growth pattern. And smaller mandibular plane angle suggests horizontal growth pattern. Occlusal plane angle. The occlusal plane is drawn through the cusps of the first premolars and first molars. The angle is met between occlusal plane angle and SN plane. The average reading for normal occlusion is 14 degrees. The angle is increased in long phase of vertical growing individuals and also skeletal open bite cases. It might be decreased in horizontally growing individuals or cases with skeletal deep bite. Dental analysis. It has six measurements. Maxillary incisor position. Mandibular incisor position, interincisal angle, lower incisor to chin, maxillary incisor position. It is determined by relating the upper incisors to the NA line. There are two measurements upper incisors to NA angle and upper incisors to an a distant angle is formed by intersection of long axis of upper central incisors and an a line the ideal is 22 degrees it shows the axial inclination of maxillary incisors upper incisor to the an a line distance is the distance from the most labial surface of the upper incisor to the an a line the ideal is 4 mm. It shows the forward or backward positioning upper incisor to an A line. Greater than 22 degrees means upper incisor's inclination is too labial. Greater than 22 degrees means upper incisor protrusion. Greater than 4 mm means the position of the upper incisor more forward. Greater than 22 degrees and more than 4 mm common in class 2 deficient 1 ma occlusion. Less than 22 degrees mean upper incisor retrusion. Less than 4 mm means the position of the upper incisor more backward. Less than 22 degrees and 4 mm common in class 2 deficient 2 ma occlusion. Mandibular incisor position. It is determined by relating the lower incisor to the NB line. There are two measurements. Lower incisor to the NB line angle. Lower incisor to the NB line distance. Lower incisor to the NB line angle is formed by intersection of long axis of lower central incisor and the NB line. It shows the axial inclination of lower incisors. The ideal is 25 degrees. Lower incisor to the NB line distance is the distance from the most labial surface of the lower incisor to the NB line. It shows the forward or backward positioning lower incisor to the NB line. The ideal is 4 mm. Greater than 25 degrees means lower incisor inclination is too labial. Greater than 4 mm mean position of the lower incisor more forward. Less than 25 degrees mean lower incisor inclination is too lingual. Less than 4 m means the position of the lower incisors more backward. The incisor angle alone or the distance of incisor alone doesn't give adequate information about the position of maxillary incisor. All three teeth have the same inclination to an A line, 22 degrees, but have different position to an A line, minus 2 mm, 4 mm, and 8 mm. All three teeth are 4 mm from the an A line, but have different inclination, 40 degrees, 22 degrees, and 3 degrees. 
interincisal angle. This angle is formed between long axis of upper and lower incisors. The interincisal angle relates the relative position of the maxillary incisors to the mandibular incisors. The ideal is 130 degrees. Smaller angle is found in bimaxillary dental protrusion. Bigger interincisal angle is found in bimaxillary dental retrusion. Lower incisor to the chin relationship. It is calculated at the ratio of the linear distance from the labial surface of the mandibular central incisor to the NB line over the linear distance of the chin to the NB line. It is calculated at the ratio of the linear distance from the labial surface of mandibular central incisor to the NB line over the linear distance of the chin to the NB line. The ratio between these two measurements to the NB line should be the same. Soft tissue analysis S line, aesthetic plane of Steiner is a line connecting the midpoint of lower border of the nose to the soft tissue pogonion to assess balance and harmony of lower facial profile. Lips in well-balanced faces should touch this line. Lips are located beyond this line, tend to be protrusive. If the lips are positioned behind this line, the patient profiles is generally interpreted as concave.